Hello, Morris. Welcome to Tanks Invest. We're talking about investing, finance, and professional. For today's terms only, the investment we're going to talk today will be 30th. It's my second postings of today. Respect to recording time of 2:59 p.m. on Eastern Time. Ethereum coin trading four thousand six hundred sixty-eight dollars, up about four point nine zero percent so far. On the overall crypto market versus the equity market, we are seeing the exact opposite in terms of momentum today. On the crypto side, you know,、uh, with respect to altcoin, which are more prone to、uh, volatility,、um, selectively and also majority、uh, are currently、uh, sustaining more of a bullish momentum at the moment. With、uh, respect to Ethereum, which is kind of like a pseudo altcoin, is currently up about close to five percent at the moment. While at the same time, Solana, XRP, Polkadot, Algorand, and Shiba Inu are all respectively up right now. While Cardano and Bitcoin just kind of trading on a sideways fashion, leading downwards right now.、Uh, Bitcoin just kind of not doing much, as up about or down about zero point one zero percent, while Cardano is down about one point seven one percent at the moment. Obviously, due to the suspension, all the legality issues、uh, that you know eToro has decided to suspend, or not allow、um, you know people to be transacting、uh, on their platform. Right, so which will subsequently drive some downward selling pressure. <clears throat> and on the equity side, we are seeing、um, a downward trend at the moment. A、uh, spy is currently down about one point five zero percent. Nasdaq's down about one point five zero percent as well. Dow Jones also down about one point five zero percent as well. So collectively,、uh, we are seeing the opposite with the anti-correlation effect it being in full prominent display at the moment. And with respect to the cows, on what's really driving this、uh, macro sell-off on the equity side, with subsequently pump up the crypto side, is really driven by the Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen、uh, testimony、uh, in front of the lawmakers earlier this morning, right? And you know, with respect to this、uh, conference or、um, interview, if you may. Uh, that they were having is really cultivated around、uh, how we triangulating the you know economic outlook going forward with this unknown COVID variant, the Omicron that's currently you know in the equation. At the same time, the job numbers and you know the quantitative tapering plan going forward. What's the timeline like that going forward? How do we triangulate you know the asset purchasing、um, and how we triangulating the job numbers as well? <clears throat> so. You know, overall, I would say just like on a high level synopsis of the art of the、uh, testimony, if you may,、um, it was relatively dip- diplomatic. You know, he, you know, Jerome tried his best to not obviously、uh, scare people away or drive any fear mongering, but there are some specific key words, uh, uh, you know, in his verbiage that obviously trigger some,、um, you know, more of a negative foreshadow or investor sentiment, right? And with respect to some of the key quotes that I have captured here on my notes, I was like taking notes while I was like listening in.、Um, so some of the quotes that I I've listed here would be,、uh, you know, and I quote with respect to what Jerome has said. Right, it's difficult to predict the persistence and effect of supply constraints, but now it appears that factors pushing inflation upward will linger well into next year. Okay. In addition, with the rapid improvement in the labor market, slack is diminishing and wages are rising at a brisk pace. He thinks, or I think, quote by Jerome Powell, the risk of high inflation has increased. Okay, so, and he also said that with respect to what Joe Biden has also mentioned recently is that. To address this new COVID variants, you know, which the government will collaborate alongside with, you know, the scientists in the U.S. are racing against, you know, obviously to do some lab research, to do some,、um, you know, studies and etc. etc. to assess and try to find a solution to contain, but also, you know, a, a you know some sort of、um, resolution. Right to fix this going forward, right? And he also mentioned that with the recent rise in COVID cases and the emergence of the Omicron variant poses downside risk to employment, and economic activity increases uncertainty for inflations.、Um, 
Uh, Jerome Powell also said that greater concern about the virus could reduce people's willingness to work in person, which could also slow the labor market and intensify supply chain disruption. Um, and also, like Janet Yellen has, you know, said something along the line that kind of support this statement, right? Um, when you know the uh, lawmakers was asking, you know, comparable questions that they were asking Jerome. Um, so today's um. How would you say? I think Jerome and Jenny Elling are being truthful, right, with respect to what's going on right now. Um, inflation is definitely a concern, right? Um, but it's a gradual concern, right? It's something that we are expecting to happen. It's going to happen gradually. It's not a sudden fashion, despite how sudden it looks on the equity side because of the, you know, just fear mongering is more emotionally driven than an actual um, affectation, if you may, right? So it's not a true reflection. And also the search that we're seeing right now on crypto side, the reason we're surging is because inflation is a kind of a, you know, um, an opposite affectation in comparisons to crypto, which is more of like a safe haven type of instrument, right? Which also going to translate into more of a buying pressure, right? So when people sell on the equity side, both on the institutional side of the spectrum, but also on the retail investor on the spectrum, it will incentivize a, you know, some monetary circulation to go into crypto. Right, so Ethereum was in the perfect position to capture it right now, and also at the same time, with respect to the technicals, um, we are seeing, um, you know, Golden Cross as we talked about earlier this morning, and we are slowly forming a cup and handle as well, um, trying to get to the four thousand eight hundred seventy one. As we get there, we're obviously gonna consolidate a little bit, dip a little bit, and then surge up from there. So. <clears throat> Respect to the price target that some of the banks have talked about, like Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan, like the 6,500 tar price target, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that, that actually come true, right? And $12,000, you know, based on some um, analysts also mentioned by end, end of this year, um, it's a bit of a stretch, but uh, anything can happen within crypto, right? But overall, I would say it's relatively bullish in terms of the overall market, right? Right? So... I think the worst, not the worst, I mean, depending on how diversified your portfolio is, right? As the equity market further go down, the crypto market is going to further go up, right? It's that anti-collision effect that we're experiencing right now, right? And I think it has a real shot of actually doing so. So um, we'll see how that goes. And ultimately, we're not, you know, gambling. We are looking into um, an investment with... Um, you know, logical mindset, and we're also in the job of risk mitigation at the same time. So let's dive into news real quick to see any new news that came out, like new news. Obviously, they're old news, but uh, they are called news anyways. And then uh, the first one's on CoinDesk about two hours ago, talked about Avalanche Layer 1 token source in November as if their feed drove competition. So this is something that... Um, you know, something that we've been experiencing so far is the high gas fee with respect to Ethereum. Um, and I know several different startups uh, to technology companies, to crypto companies, including uh, Vitalik Butcher and himself are working on, you know, improving upon this value proposition going forward, right? So gas fee still seems like to be uh, one of the hurdles that we're still trying to jump over. The next one's on the Zing about three hours ago, talk about CryptoPunk. 5807 sold for 95 Ethereum today. And this is like a like a guy with a mohawk with like sunglasses. Um, he has like a mole on his uh, right cheek with like a purple background and it sold for 95 Ethereum today. So amazing. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about this. And then next one is uh, talk about on Bazinga about the Ethereum rises more than 8% in the last 24 hours. Obviously, because of the inflationary pressure that we're experiencing right now, and also with respect to the rebound from the COVID variance news that we've had on, um, obviously, uh, how long was that? On last Friday, specifically. Um, and we're rebounding um, ever since the sell that we have subsequently on the weekend as well. Um, and the Golden Cross being formed, and the Jerome news with the anti collision effect from the equity side all drive this surge that we're seeing today. And then, uh, and then that's pretty much it on the news front. Beside the macro news that we already talked about with respect to the Jerome and the Janet Yelling testimony that we've heard earlier today, 
So with respect to Ethereum right now, it's uh, up about 4.45% and we are forming a golden cross. We are closing in on the cup and handle at the $4,871. So as we get there, uh, consolidate a little bit and then dip down and then recuperate as the next surge up from there. So that's the ideal situation. So we'll keep an eye out on it. Seems like the cup and handle is actually coming in fruition. Um, and we're still at the okay level, not like an overbought or oversold level. We at the neutral level, 57, right? So I think 6,500 can be a real uh, probability, you know, in terms of near terms, right? So we'll see how that goes. Bitcoin is a little bit lag right now. It's not forming a golden cross yet, but it's trying to. So it seems like there's like a lag, right? You know, historically, it's always been like Bitcoin search first and then the altcoin follows, right? But it seems like it's like the opposite effects for some reason. Um, seems like it's because of the commercialization of the NFTs, you know, Ethereum-based products uh, that's driving it. Bitcoin is kind of like the secondary in terms of how people are ranking it in their minds right now. We're just quite interesting to see the Ethereum uh, seems like it's getting a leg up right now. And uh, right now we still keep, you know, keep an eye out on it, right? I think the dip was at the 53, 52, you know, the, yeah, 53. So we are reversing up right now, but we still have to keep an eye out on it. Is this going to be a complete form of the cup and handle, which we have some room to go up to? Um, so something we have to think about, uh, seems like Ethereum is already almost there. So uh, Bitcoin seems like it's lagging still. Uh, Dogecoin is at the 2157 right now, up about 0.26%. Um, at the moment, it's still a good dip, I would say, because uh, anywhere from the current level 22 all the way to 1950 is still a good level of dollar cost average. It's just a logical level. We are slowly fusing together, so that means a golden cross is slowly coming, which is um, sounds like a, not a bad level to incur some risk at the moment. Cardano is just kind of struggling because of the obviously the legality issue news that we talked we heard from Etor recently. Um, so right now it's down about 2.11% despite the inflationary pressure that we experience on the equity side, how it anti-correlates. Um, it's still a good level to incur risk, I would say, overall for Cardano. I think 145, 141 was extremely oversold, so we'll see how that goes. Solana right now is uh, up about 4%. Uh, we are at the 51 out of 70. So ideally, dollar cost average, you know, as we cool back down, but if you want a dollar cost average now, um, you know, it's really up to you. But anywhere above this is really new territory. We don't have a lot of substantive platform for us to build upon. So the risk is higher, you know, despite how much we're lingering on, right? <clears throat> so something to think about, right? Solana is one of those uh, relatively nascent technologies still. So um, to each his own. Right, based on your risk tolerance, I, I personally would just wait until we come back down below uh, to a more of an ideal level for us, right? XRP is at the cusp of like $1. Um, and I think we should continue to search right now. We are at the OK level 43 out of 70. Uh, we broke $1. But 101 is the true level, technically. Um, and the next level is going to go up to 110. But we're basically ping-ponging right now, so we'll see how that goes. And I think if you incur some risk right now, it's not a terrible level, but it's not the best level at, by either. I think better level will be at the 93 to 88 that we were experiencing days before. Polkadot's at up about 5% right now. Again, right, anywhere from 33 all the way to 25 is still the dip. Algorand is um anywhere from 160 to 152 was still the dip, so I would probably hold right now. But if you want to buy now, I think why not, right? It's up to your risk aversion. I think we might keep leaping because uh, we are forming golden cross slowly. So as we go up, we're gonna go up to the 190 first and possibly even break to two dollars and test around like the peak at the 210. That's the max that we could potentially get up here in the near term. Shiba Inu is up about 4.14 percent right now. So um, right now we're slowly forming a golden cross. Uh, so. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, right now, it's slowly fusing together, but anywhere above this is really new territory as well. And I think we might get up to maybe the 65, 70 again, um, but it's still relatively risky. Um, the pattern is still really nascent at the moment. Uh, we still at the okay level, at the high 50s too. So not the most ideal in terms of risk right now. Um, so 
ultimately it's up to your risk aversion, right? So respect to risk management level, these are the levels identified so far. Um, feel free to use this as a reference, like against for myself, right? Not for everybody. And today was one of those, uh, you know, type of a rip off the bandage type of news, but it's the truth, right? It is what's happening. The COVID variant is still kind of up in the air right now. And Jerome has to be, you know, thoughtful and diplomatic in, in terms of how he depicts what's the current status and what's the logical outlook going forward. So um, I think he did his best. Um, it is what it is. It's something we have to work on. But I think, you know, the dips are actually around the corner or is at the corner right now. Um, so it's up to your risk aversion. But if you wait long term, and you invest long term, you will always be coming out net positive, ultimately, right? Um, so hopefully this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, and let me know how I can be helpful. And stay tuned for the Take care.